and recap my first year of nursing. I was supposed to put a non-rebreather on bullying and then I would start crying and there's no power that they won't do this kind of thing, but they will. And it's really hard as a new grad to spot that. Hated night shift. What's up everyone? Welcome back to another video. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Jasmine and I'm so glad you're here. Welcome back to my channel and welcome if some of you are new. So in today's video, I wanted to sit down and talk with you all and recap my first year of nursing. So for those of you who don't know me, my name is Jasmine. I've been a nurse now for exactly one year and it's surreal to me that time has gone by so, so fast and the fact that I'm now one year in as an ER nurse is literally insane. Remember, I feel like it's one of my most watched videos. The one who's probably found me has watched um, about my new grad experience. So I started off as a new grad in the ER, which is obviously a very intense situation. Most people do transfer from um, med surge or tele and go to ER, and it's difficult to catch the pace of the ER, especially when you're new. So looking back at that video, I recently watched it and I literally like made me sad. Crazy to, to see how far I've come. So like always, I never really planned this video. I'm kind of just going to talk with you all and when I eat my lunch, I was going to try and talk with you all and eat my lunch at the same time just so that we can have like a chit chat sit down lunchtime with me. But I think it'd be kind of difficult for me to do that. So I'm just going to go ahead and sip all the coffee. That like I said, I've been an ER nurse for one year now. Um, I really want to throw more so advice out there for people who are just starting their new grad programs. I know I literally talked to someone from my flu clinic job who is literally starting in October, same situation as I was in. And it's really difficult because of the fact that you train from October to um, like January 1st and they throw you right in on your own mid-flu season. So I want to give some advice for those of you who are going to end up being let off orientation during this flu slash COVID season because I didn't realize why our patients were so sick at the time and why I was having these mental breakdowns because it was so difficult. But now looking back at it, it was probably COVID. So one thing that was really helpful for me, I first started was to develop a routine. Get your lunch ready, get your outfit ready, get your shrubs ready, everything. Um, it helps ease your anxiety that you probably already have going into the shift. Um, I also do suggest getting in a little bit early because I like to have like the five, ten minutes to kind of just like calm yourself and then go in. Like listen to your music, jam out, do whatever you need to do. Fix your makeup because you've probably been crying on the way to work like I used to. I don't know if I mentioned in that video, but that is why I have eyeliner in my car because sometimes I would listen to like my Jesus playlist and feel really sad, <laughs> overwhelmed at work. So I would literally just play it and then I would start crying and that's the story of why I have makeup in my car now. I also want to look back at that video and tell you that... I didn't recognize it at the time as bullying, but the reason why I had so much anxiety I felt like was because I did have a charge nurse who no longer works at my facility because she like moved or whatever, um, who gave me like massive anxiety. And I kind of realized it when I didn't have her as my charge nurse. And having that person like especially in like a place of like power over you and then kind of like whenever you're, you're asking questions they like condescendingly say something to you it's really hard for you to learn and it's really hard for you to trust yourself it makes you feel dumb and it makes you feel like you're incompetent and oh my gosh i probably shouldn't have drank this because i think i'm lactose it's difficult to learn in that kind of um situation because of the fact that you're so new you don't know if it's really the fact that you're incompetent or because they're just being really bitchy to you. So I didn't realize that um, until like way, way, way later on that that person had gotten in trouble for bullying people 
um, even as a church nurse, and you think, oh, because they're in a position of power that they won't do this kind of thing, but they will. And it's really hard as a new grad to spot that, and I wish I had realized that sooner so that I could have at least told someone. I'm gonna be honest and tell you that even though she was kind of bitchy to me, I learned a lot because I felt so overwhelmed by the fact that she would say things to me like, like you're not supposed to put a non-breather on for more than an hour and looking back at it now that I am like one year in, she made it sound like they were gonna die but they're not gonna die if I have them on for an hour and a half. I've had like doctors who I asked if they wanted the non breather on and they were like, yeah, you can leave it on for as long as you need to, which personally, I don't like that because the retention of CO2, but you know, like the hour and a half that I had the patient on there and the way that the person had told me off, made me feel like, oh my god, I like almost killed this person. But in reality, no. They were just fine. <laughs> Another thing I learned was not to take everything so personally. That's one of the scenarios. And it's just, I think one of the biggest things is you really have to be firm with what you say. Never, like, I don't know how to explain it, but I know it's good to ask questions but always know like what's going on because for example if you're asking a question sometimes it's best to it's always best to ask questions but when you ask questions kind of know the answer to them kind of understand the gist of the patient so you're not like dumbfound when you are asked the follow-up question um i'm trying to think of what else i really want to watch that video let me pull up the video I think it's wild to see that that's one of my most viewed videos. I literally just sat down in the midst of being sick and just put on some eyelashes and filmed it so that, I don't know, I think at that point I probably only had like a thousand subscribers. I'm glad that it brings a sense of community to people because I felt like I was the only person who was behind and competent. Oh my gosh, my eyelashes look really good though. <laughs> I wanted to point out about the video I'm like watching it now is the fact that I was on night shift and I got super sick okay so first of all if you probably have never worked in the hospital environment before three days a week you are likely to get sick because of the new germs that you're exposed to I probably got super sick because of the fact that there was COVID in the air um, so that's something I didn't see coming, but I wish I kind of knew. Another thing is if you're going out to night shift, you're probably going to experience like nausea when you're trying to eat at night. I personally, like I lost a lot of weight because I intermittent fast and to switch the time frame on that was very, very difficult on nights. Um, I used to work 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. and it's nice for that shift because around 3 a.m. it dies down and until like 6 in the morning. So you have like this downtime and it's really nice. Um, but the worst thing went for me was when I was getting home, I it was first of all really freaking hot. And it was hard to sleep during the day because the fact that the heat was like overwhelming. And you know my Asian household does not want to turn the, the freaking AC most of the time. Um, but... I have recently switched, I think I switched um, mid-August to mid-shift, which is unique to the ER. Um, the ER has mid-shifters, I guess it's because of the census. Um, we have, I think the earliest mid-shifter I've seen is 9 to 9, which is essentially a day shifter. Um, I've seen 11 to 11, that's really popular, and 12 to 12 is also really popular. Um, there always is a 2 p.m. or um, sometimes there's a 3 p.m. to 3 a.m. one, and that's typically during flu season. I know that they just put someone off, who just got off orientation there. Um, so yeah, that's the different shifts of the ER. I think that's what really why I wanted the ER because I wanted to be a mid shifter, I never wanted to be a night shifter, and I I'm gonna tell you, I absolutely hated night shift. 
it made me depressed it made me gain a bunch of weight maybe people didn't see it people would tell me like you look the same but i felt like not myself anymore i was just like super out of it and i had these massive mood swings and i may seem like i was okay on camera but i definitely wasn't i literally even contacted my doctor to see if i needed a therapist because that's how horrible it was or how horrible i felt on nights but yeah that was night shift for me i'm glad i switched i know that like half the time on mid shift it's awful because we're so busy all the freaking time down to the hour that we are about to leave but I'd much rather get quality sleep and feel more like myself because I typically sleep around like midnight or 1 and usually I sleep around like 3.30 which isn't like, it sounds really bad but I'd rather come home before the sun comes up so that's my biggest thing. Um, it's really difficult at my hospital particularly because it's a for-profit hospital and I think right now they're really trying to like hone in and save money for example we're using like these cloth gowns that we're supposed to toss in the laundry basket which is good i guess for mother earth but for our aseptic techniques that they expect us to do and preserving our like cleanliness it's probably not the best because what ends up happening is you take off your gloves and then usually i would like take pull it like the plastic one I would pull it off and then my, bring my gloves with me and throw it all away. Now I take off my gloves and I have to like pull the string and then pull the other string and then find a laundry basket and put it, which is so awful. Um, but overall, I will say when you're in, I feel a lot more confident about my skills. Um, I feel like most of the time most of the time i'm able to get my ivs now while i was like 30 percent accuracy when i was making that first video that probably everyone saw it um i am now probably like 70 80 percent i'm okay no okay so my camera died but i hope you all don't mind the fact that the quality is probably a lot worse but I did want to finish this video and say it is really difficult when you don't have an IV. I think it's overwhelming because you have to track someone down to help you. I think something that I wish that I could do now is the ultrasound machine, which is essentially an ultrasound to find an IV. And I think that makes you feel a lot more independent because you aren't reliant on someone else to help look for an IV for you. No matter if you're able to find the IV or if you aren't able to find it, you just use the ultrasound. I think it's really difficult because for ultrasound, it's we're typically at like this angle for IVs. For ultrasound, it's like you go almost like a 90 degree angle and then you tilt it down. It's a, it's a much longer needle. It's a whole process that I still have yet to learn. Um, I feel like there's still so much to learn even one year in. Um, but I will say that I've delved into different, um, like specialties, like for example, um, as many of you probably saw in my flu clinic video, that one I had picked up as a per diem job and it's way more chill and it made me realize that even though sometimes I felt so burnt out in the ER, like nursing, there's so many things that you can do with it. Um, another job that I also picked up, oh my god, I keep picking up these jobs and I feel <laughs> like too much sometimes, but it's a pain management job where you monitor pre-op, post-op, it's same day surgery essentially, and you do their IVs, do their checks, it's mostly paperwork to be honest with you, um, but I'm excited to get more into that because I think if I were to stay within the hospital that I would much rather do something more leisurely like PACU. Not saying that they don't do as many um, skills there, but they more so have an easier pace as opposed to the ER where they'll literally call you f with um, someone who fell and then all of a sudden when they get to your door, they'll tell you that, oh, they're altered and they have slurred speech and they have a droop and it ends up being a code stroke. So that's something that I look forward to in the future. As for schooling wise, I don't think that I, I don't really know. I will keep you posted on that because I don't really know exactly what I want to do, but I feel like I'm learning so much and doing so much right now that um, at one point I felt very stagnant, 
but there's so much to learn every single day within the ER and just even if you're just working at a hospital it's a really good experience and once you have that experience within the hospital I feel like you could literally go anywhere so don't be discouraged if you feel really shitty within your first year because your first year of nursing is 110% going to be the worst and the hardest year of your nursing career and yeah don't be discouraged also if you don't land your nursing job that quickly it's difficult right now and it's a hard time and yeah i don't really know what else to say i wish you all the best of luck if you have any questions leave them down below or you can always follow me on my instagram at jazz the nurse and you can message me on there if you don't feel comfortable with commenting down below but don't forget to like and even just comment hello down below. I always answer to my comments in the comment section. Sometimes I don't see them on Instagram for some reason. Um, but I wish you all the best of luck and I hope you're all doing well and I will see you in the next video.